Oh, I see you're writing your letter to Santa. Well, not exactly. Don't you want Santa to bring you a new toy? Sure, that would be nice, but... You've done some wonderful things for others this year. Remember when you made cookies for the seniors at the home? Yes, I do. I know. But this is a letter to Jesus. Oh. Toys are great, and I really want them. But there are things in the world I really need. Things that don't go under the Christmas tree. I decided to write to Jesus because there are sick people, like Aunt Jenny, who need help fighting cancer. Yes, that's a hard one to wrap. I'm going to write about the people I see right outside of our church who are tired and hungry and need blankets and food. Jesus could show us how we could welcome them together at our door, like with a hot bowl of soup. I have so many things to tell him. If I write them down, I'll remember them all. And when I'm done, I'm going to rip it up and let the pieces find him in heaven. What a beautiful idea. How can we help? Dad, maybe you can tell me the amazing story of Jesus while I write. I would love to. A long time ago, some 2,000 years ago, when King Herod ruled in Judea, God sent an angel named Gabriel to give a young woman named Mary and her fiancé Joseph a special message. What was the message? The angel Gabriel told Mary that she was blessed by the Holy Spirit. He said, Peace be with you, Mary. God is pleased with you. Mary was shocked and confused by what the angel said. Do not be afraid. Gabriel said to her, Don't be afraid. You will become pregnant by the Holy Spirit. You will, be, you will soon have a baby, and he, and he shall be called Jesus. He will be God's own son, and his kingdom will never end. And although Mary was afraid, she trusted God. It wasn't long after that that another angel came, this time to tell Joseph not to be afraid. The angel said, Joseph, you are to be wed to Mary. She has been chosen by God to be the mother of his son. You will name him Jesus, because it means Savior, and he will grow up to save the world. At this time, the land called Nazareth, where Mary and Joseph lived, was under the rule of rule by the Roman Empire, Caesar Augustus. The emperor wanted to conduct a count of everyone to keep a record of how many people would be paying him taxes. They had to travel a long distance back to their hometown to be counted. What do you think the journey to Bethlehem was like? Grandpa would be great one to ask about that. Even I know he's not that old, Dad. Let's call him. Joseph had a difficult and dangerous journey to Bethlehem, probably walking nearly 150 kilometers up hills and down hills, but not both ways uphill like your parents probably told you when they went to school. At that time of year, the nights were chilly, perhaps rainy. Mary was nearly ready to give birth, but they still walked 15 kilometers a day to get there in time. They were lucky to have a donkey to carry their supplies. Then once they arrived there, there was no room for them in the inn. Hang on, your grandmother wants to say something about the Christmas story. I'd like to share with you a favorite poem of mine. It's called, In the Bleak Midwinter. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, in the bleak midwinter long ago. Heaven cannot hold him, nor earth sustain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to rain. In the bleak midwinter, a stable place sufficed. The Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. What can I give him, poor as I am? 
If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? Give my heart. Thank you for letting me share that. I miss you and hope to see you soon. It was so good to hear Grandma and Grandpa's voice. I miss them. Me too. I have an idea. Why don't we call a few of our church poets? Yes, they'll also have some beautiful words to share with us. Hi, Alan. We'd love to hear your new poem called Starstruck. A flame on our advent wreath takes flight at night to be a star or our Christmas tree, spreading light, draping love over each branch and over every needle, cloaking even the spaces between. Then this Christmas star launches, reaching further afar. There it is, above my house, my home, God's love draping my abode, my neighborhood, and still it rises higher over the city, that town now surrounded by hope, by peace, by joy, by love. Above us it flies, yet farther as it rises, its rays stretch all the way around this weary world like God's great arms of love. Finally, the star stops in the skies where it shines like that star that so far ago in the past pointed to the Christ child, Jesus, still being born, now mild, now wild in my heart, your heart setting us on fire so that our lights so shine like a flame on an advent wreath. Let's listen to a poem written by Fiona. She's 12 years old. Though I didn't understand, and it wasn't very grand, I knew he was divine. They should have brought out some wine. Finally, we must call Danuta. She loves writing and reading poems. Maybe she'll read for us, Let Us Send, and A Christmas Dream. Let us send. Let us send a message of love to our troubled world. A soothing smile, a joyous song, a sympathetic word. Let us light that candle of peace to warm our soul from within and mold a cradle in our heart to let the Christ child in. May joy at Christmas fill the air with a glorious sound of cheer to keep our longing hearts aglow with love's content throughout the year. I had a dream that in this world of unrest and despair, a little snowflake tumbled down and covered fields with care. Reflecting on the misty white, a star so radiant bright shone happily beneath the heavens and brought us the gift of light. And through the silence whispered the wind mysteriously from above, Come, join us now. It's a time of joy and love. Poets have such a gift with words. That inspires me to write some beautiful Christmas poetry myself. Anyone else want to try writing with me? Sure. 
We'll have some extra time on our hands this year. It would be a good break from watching too much of the news. Now, let's get back to the story of Jesus in the manger. And all the animal guests who were there at his birth. I wonder what it was like in the stable. I bet the animals were surprised. Usually the people looking after them would sleep on the floor above the animals to keep warm, not with them. The animals sure were lucky to be next to Jesus the moment he was born. He was just a tiny baby, but he had so many great things to come in his life. Healing sick teaching people. If you were there, what would you tell Jesus? If I were there, I'd tell Jesus that even though everyone has high hopes for him, that if he trusts in God, he will be able to do it, just like he ended up teaching us. Thanks for sharing that. Some of the children at church also want to share their letters to Jesus. Let's listen. I love hearing the littlest voices of faith. Me too. They fill my heart with joy. Dear Jesus, have a good time at church. The James. Ready? Go. I love you. Dear Jesus, I hope that COVID-19 stops, please. From Gabrielle, peace out. <laughs> Say love, Spencer. Love, Spencer. Um, Happy Jesus. That's supposed to be Happy Birthday Jesus from Lauren and Spencer. Dear Jesus, if you were born in year 2020, would you do anything differently? Could you fix COVID-19 for us? 
We would like to visit with our family and friends for Christmas. Thanks for helping us through this pandemic so far. From Fiona, Lily, and Isla. Dear Jesus, I wish that the world is peaceful. Dear Jesus, I hope that people will have love and health in their life. See, Mom, my letter to Jesus is so important. I want him to know that we still love him and that there are so many things to hope for because God sent him to be born. It makes me wonder, what could have happened to him if the innkeeper didn't give them room at the stable? What do you mean? Well, the world would be a terrible place if Jesus didn't have a safe, warm place to stay. It was a good thing the innkeeper was generous and thoughtful with the room he had available. Child, I think you gave me some ideas about sharing that can help us even today. That's exactly why we have a church family, to share our faith and to show good works in the community. I think your letter to Jesus is already being answered.